What's up guys, Steven and Tom here. Hey guys. So today we will show you how to build an altcoin mining rig with retail parts from Amazon. So you can find all the links to everything down below in the description and today we'll show you how to build it, how to set it up and how to get started with mining. So let's go. So building an Ethereum mining rig is really like growing your own money tree. The rig will run and create digital currency while you sit back and have a few beers. But as you might know, getting 6 or 8 GPUs of the same type and brand can be really hard nowadays. So today I'll show you that it is possible to build a mining rig with 8 totally different GPUs. Also, we'll use those different GPUs to compare the mining power in future videos. The most important part is a motherboard that supports 6 or 8 GPUs. So I linked you some in the description. Now we are using the Asus Prime H270 Plus. This board has 6 PCIe slots and 2 MPCIe slots. So in theory we can mine with 8 GPUs on this board if we use adapters for the MPCIe ports. So we are using a very cheap Intel G3900 CPU, 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, high quality risers from Amazon, a 120GB Kingston SSD and two EVGA 850W gold standard power supplies. All that will be built into a Chinese 19 inch server housing which we'll have to modify to take up to two power supplies. 8 GPUs can consume a lot of power and right now it's really hard to find a single power supply with enough 6 pin connectors and which can deliver enough power. So for sure you can also use a single 1600 watt mining power supply like the LC Power Mining PSU. But right now it's quite hard to get it in our country. The first attempt of modding the case was a huge fail since the risers are too high. However, we found a solution to mount the second power supply a bit later. The case which we are using is a special 19 inch mining rig and has enough space to take up to 8 GPUs. So the first thing was getting the motherboard into it. As with every case, don't forget the tiny standoffs, otherwise you will short your motherboard. And don't forget the I.O. shield for the connectors. Then we have installed the CPU. A cheap dual core is more than enough since mining only puts load on the GPUs, not on the CPU. Also we are just using the stock cooler since the space is very limited and the CPU won't run at maximum load all the time anyway. Then it was time to get in the first power supply. A single PSU is definitely a better solution but unfortunately all of them were sold out in our country. We have also installed a few fans in the front because the GPUs are sitting really close to each other and some additional airflow helps to cool the system. So we are running Windows 10 on the rig. So that's why we need an SSD with at least 120 gigs for the operating system and the virtual memory. However, if you can afford it, you can for sure also pick a bigger one. And if you're running Linux, you could probably use a smaller one. But SSDs are quite cheap nowadays anyway. So you don't need an expensive mining motherboard for a 6 or 8 GPU rig. We are using a normal consumer motherboard which has 6 PCIe ports and 2 MPCIe ports. So in order to use the MPCIe ports, we need some MPCIe to PCIe adapters which you can get very cheap on Amazon. All the GPUs sit in the front of the rig, so we need some extender boards which are called risers. So there are some tiny boards that plug into your PCIe port and then there is a USB port where you have to plug in the extender cable. Now risers are usually the weakest part of the system since they tend to fail a lot. A good tip is to hot glue them. This prevents that they slide out of the PCIe port because most of them don't fit very tight. The USB to USB cable now plugs into the actual riser board which has a full sized PCIe port for the GPU. Also it needs some additional power from a 6 pin VGA connector but for sure you can also use the included SATA to 6 pin adapters to power it. Now cable management is really hard with so many GPUs in such a tiny case but it's quite important to think about how you arrange the cables because you may need to remove some of them for maintenance or troubleshooting in the future. The case has also a power button, reset switch and a USB port in the front of it, which you need to connect directly to the motherboard using the jumper wires. 
So now we have used seven different GPUs. Currently we are waiting for number eight to arrive, which is a special mining card from Sapphire. It's not recommended to mix so many different GPUs since it's harder to manage overclocking and you have to mod a bunch of different BIOS to get decent results. So it's way easier to do that with one card from one brand and then just copy the BIOS to all of them. And also they will run more stable. However, you can use any GPUs you want. It's no problem to mix different brands and types, but it's not recommended. Now, after all the GPUs are in, it's time to check all the cables and connect the power cables to the GPUs, risers and the motherboard. First test and boom, no HDMI output, but that's completely normal. So first you need to install Windows with one GPU only. And if you try to start with all eight connected, you will probably not be able to boot. All right, guys, so the rig is up and running. As you can see, we have a fresh installation of Windows, but it's currently running on only one GPU. If you install all the GPUs and you don't do modifications to the BIOS and some things to Windows, it won't boot. So you will have a lot of issues on this specific motherboard. The keyboard doesn't work. It won't let you boot Windows. So it's way easier with Linux, but for our tests, we want to use Windows and Therefore, we have to do some tricks and get into the BIOS and adjust some settings, so let's do this. Alright, so right now some tips, but there will be a future video on the exact steps. So first install Windows with one GPU connected to the riser and install the drivers, that's very important. Then you go into the BIOS and search for 4G decoding and switch it to on. Also on some motherboard it's needed to switch to PCIe Gen 1. I left you some links to the settings down below in the description. But now, once that is done, power off and connect all GPUs and reboot into Windows. And when you open the device manager, you will see that Windows starts to recognize all the GPUs. But no worries, this can take up to 10 minutes. Alright, so once that is done, you can start your favorite miner and start mining your favorite altcoin. I personally mine Ethereum and Ubik. I'm also using Claymore's dual miner for Nvidia and AMD GPUs because I'm using a bunch of different cards. However, once you got the perfect settings, you can lean back and enjoy your new mining rig. In the next videos, I'll also show you some little tricks on how to get more mining power out of your cards. So stay tuned. All right guys, so the rig is up and running as you can see. So it's hashing right now, it's mining Ethereum. And it took me quite a while to like update Windows, to get the cards recognized, to get the drivers installed, to tweak the BIOS and everything. And in the next video I'll show you basically how to set your rig up. So from the scratch, from a basic Windows installation, what kind of things you should do, what kind of things you need to do in order to improve the hash rate and to get the power consumption down and much, much more. So. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the rig, about the hardware used, about how to put everything together, just post a comment down below and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. So once again, big thanks for watching. If you like this content, please like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day, guys.